Oh, he's getting pretty close there. Man, I can't believe there wasn't that a blood. Kyrie Singh looks so sexy with blood pouring out. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back, for I'm the one, the only Hobo Tama. I hope everyone's having a good weekend. News and notes. Don't be stupid out there, people. I saw a bunch of protesters on TV. I hope they all get tased. Um, I know there's been rights going on. Trust me, no matter what you think about social justice, even though it was bad, stealing a 50-inch TV is not going to make it any better. That's all I have to say about that. So I know if I was a teacher, honestly, if I found out my students were out protesting, it's like, but I you miss your exam. I'd be like, you just failed my class, kid. But that's okay. I'm not here to talk about social justice stuff. That's for other people. I'm here to talk about pro wrestling. And wow. Was it a weird show tonight? Raw and SmackDown are getting different. I'm not too sure it's a good different though. It's definitely something different going on. But first, let's get to the shout out. I think all this started because someone was wearing an N1 t shirt. And I brought this up. I'm like, is N1 a thing or is it just at Walmart now? And I think someone said N1's vintage. I never knew that. Well, that's okay. Let's go. Let's do some shout outs. I think Dusty Muffler. I think you said the next time we hear your name. We'll be inside a Daytona Beach Bum Fight League ring. Because you, sir, just got tossed. The real one. You can walk out of here. Prez, you just saw Nikki Cross to take it off? She almost did. Frozen curse. Wait, really? You're kung fu fighting. And then Frozen Curse, you're the opening bump of the show?
Actually, I figured I would explain the videos I can send out to people. Because there hasn't been any wrestling shows in a while. Nothing that's kind of thankworthy. Tamina with the plot. OMFG. And then kick out at two. You are Nikki Cross's tag team partner. And just to let you know a little bit what's happening this week. Tomorrow I go live, I do my live stream show. Um, hopefully I remember tomorrow to get things reset. The English version and not, and not the Mexican version. Wednesday is still AEW review. Thursday is going to be a In Your House prediction. So I just learned that In Your House is actually going to be on Sunday. Which is weird, because I'm used to NXT pay-per-views being on Saturday. So that's going to be... Ah, I have to figure something out. Because generally, I always like to have a small feast. But Sundays are just... I don't know. Sundays are weird. We'll see what happens. Who knows? They might give me off. I have absolutely no clue. Um, so Thursday, I'm going to do a prediction show. I'll probably just find... If he hasn't gotten arrested yet, El Vagabundo, Hobo, Cinco Cinco, I don't know, as long as he hasn't done anything stupid. Again, don't do stupid things in front of cops. Very bad. Uh, Friday's going to be a typical Friday night Smackdown. Saturday, I'm off. And then Sunday, I'll be doing a live stream. Our R and R show. What I can pour in your house. That should be interesting. I've seen some of the matches. I've seen the part of the match card. I have a feeling it's gonna go one of two ways. It's gonna be either really good or really bad. Because they have it set up from like the one fight scene from Lionheart, which also I should find. I should make that the video for that. But that's okay. It's time to talk about some. With all my thank yous gone out, it's time to talk about some WWE Raw. Wow, it was really weird. It starts off Monday Night Raw, and he says, "Oh, I'm here. I'm here not to bury Rey Mysterio, but I'm here to praise him." No, he's here to try and give Rey Mysterio's retirement speech for him. Um, then Alistair Black comes out. Seth so is like, oh, I'll handle this myself. I don't know. I was taking a shower. Because listening to, to Seth Rollins talk is, is way too long. Kills it. Uh, Seth, he starts out pretty aggressive. He does a dive onto Aleister Black. That's where I kind of pick up. Then uh, Seth and Black. Yeah, Aleister Black. And Seth Rollins go counter counter for counter for a while, which was pretty good. It's just good to see good old fashioned technical wrestling, which is good. Um, up up to that, that kick. Also, oh, Black's kicks look vicious. I don't care what he says that he pulls them or whatever, they look vicious. And uh, then Murphy in theory, um, actually, Alistair Black is sent to the outside by Seth. Murphy in theory kind of stalk Alistair until. Armberto Carrero Valegas shows up and he evens things up. Uh, Seth then works a very deliberate pace, not so much a rest hold pace. I've seen Seth's rest hold pace. Rest hold, rest hold mania. This was much more deliberate, uh, mainly striking. I don't think there were any rest holds. Uh, some rope running. It was very deliberate, but it wasn't anything snoozeworthy. Uh, then Alistair Black, 
Oh, wow. He has that bridging German suplex. That looks so pretty. Uh, then Rollins go to the outside. He gets posted. Seth gets a, gets a frog split. His one frog splash gets only a two out of that. Then there was a running knee by Alistair Black. Again, his knees are so crisp. I dare say they're probably the best knees in the business. Then um, Theory and Murphy got got to they got on top of the apron, got distracted. They distracted Alistair Black. However, Umberto Grillo's there. He bring they go up, and then they go back down. And Alistair Black gets he gets the roll up win because Seth tried a quick roll up. Nope, Seth gets the roll up, and then so this was actually pretty good. This was a good. Cheeseburger match. But then, of course, because you have a three on two, let the beatings begin. And Zelina Vega and Angel Garza in the back. Whoa! Zelina Vega wearing that pink latex outfit. Angel Garza is just being Angel Garza wooing Charlie. Charlie. You better check your panties, Charlie. You have a little moist spot there. But yeah, she... Let's just say, Charlie was getting them vapors, baby. And then... The sad thing is... Angel Garza gave her, like, this rose. It's a fake rose, but still, it's a rose nonetheless. It's like a stuffed toy rose I would give my women friends. And then Zelina Vega just took it. Ripped it up and like like threw it at her, and the one pedal like fell right down between Charlie's ample bosom. Then Shawn Michaels, uh, the Heartbreak Kid, predicts Edge will win. MVP and Lana talk for a while, and Lana just ends. Ah, slap! Lana is not looking good. Lana's either had surgery done, or who. Ever does her makeup. She looks like a hookered up high school girl going to a prom for like the first time. She's the lipstick and cheek toner or bronze or whatever women use. That's this looks ugh, cringeworthy at best. Uh, yeah, I have to keep on adjusting my computer because I've been fiddling with it during the day. Because I know today I got just got I just ordered Assassin Creed's Syndicate. I've heard good things about that game. That might be the last Assassin Creed's game I get because now everything else is getting kind of weird. But oh, that's enough about that. Um, and so yeah, there's that. Then Apollo Crews takes on Kevin Owens. Apollo Crews says, "Kevin Owens, you are the only person worthy enough to challenge for this belt." Kevin Owens is like, "I don't need a pity party." He's like, "No, this isn't a pity party. Let's fight." Kevin Owens is like, "Good, let's fight." And they started to fight. It was a really good match. Um, very quick going. Again, some of the moves. Apollo Crews no sells the shoulder tackle. He does that. That upsets Kevin Owens. He gets nailed by a drop kick. That's pretty cool. Uh, Kevin Owens again does a sent on off apron and the top rope. It's only got a two count. And they do some mie boos. Apollo Crews eats a super kick. And. Sees the super kick and then he starts his comeback with the corner splashes. That's pretty cool. KO Trey sends on, but this time got the knees up. And oh, I'm gonna stop here because this match right now is a cheeseburger match. But Angel Garza and Andrade have to get involved. And I'll tell you what, this match this could have been a surf and turf match. But because those two got involved, once they got involved, holla, holla, player! We're going to have a tag team match again. Oh, I'm not a fan of these impromptu matches. This, this is getting very tropic. Very old. So it's Apollo Cruz and Kevin Owens on Angel Garza and Andrade. Garza and Andrade, they're the fresher of the two. They take charge of the match, of course. Uh, Garza, that cheap shot on KO. Andrade, he could not hit the three amigos, though. For they for Cruz and Kev did not wear themselves down enough. Uh, Angel Garza takes out the knee of Kevin Owens on the outside, but it's stuck out there. Then there was a 
toss power bomb by Apollo Cruz onto Andrade. Cruz and KO wins. Why bother having the smash? But eh, it is what it was. I think for the most, you know, it wasn't going to be much because Angel Garza wore his T-shirt the whole time. Once the wrestler wears her T-shirt the whole time for their match, yeah, you know, it's like, okay, whatever. It's not even worth taking my shirt off. It was a ham sandwich. When the Street Profits and Viking Raiders, they went bowling. For some reason, Ivar just, like, gets all the women. Maybe it's because Eric is, is already married to one Sarah Logan. You know, so it was okay. They went from like regular bowling to like that flashy neon disco bowling thing. I don't know. I've never done disco bowling. And then there's the Iconics! And Alexa Bliss and uh, Nikki Cross fighting in the Performance Center gym. That's pretty interesting. We go to break. Then we come back and we have Billy Kay taking on Nikki Cross. And wow, Nikki Cross starts out fast and furious. The crazy Scottish woman she is. She bangs Billy Kay's head into all of all four of the turnbuckles. Oh, Billy Kay eats every turnbuckle. And then she uh whatever the kick was called the Shades of K. That was pretty quick. Um Billy then also it's a discus forum. She, Billy Kay is surprisingly a very good wrestler. She's also very loud. She puts the test this one chin lock in forever. But because she's so loud, she's actually louder than the audience. It, I don't know, it just makes it seem different. And I know it's just a chin lock. So it's just a very simple chin lock like this. Except for when Seth Rollins applies chin lock, he just like lays there for like a minute or two. Where the Billy Kay? Oh, ask her off. I know she wants to top now. You shut up. You don't know how to apply a rear chin lock. Oh, I am the master of the rear chin lock. And all she does is talk throughout it. I don't know how he... She must be a screamer. But, oh, wait. Um, but, yeah, all she does is talk through the whole match, which is good because it, she it's, at, again, louder than the audience. That's that ambiance, the, the, um, the showmanship quality to it. I like it. Oh, I've never had a woman with a screamer either. Indeed. Then Nikki Cross makes it makes her a typical comeback. And when she does, she almost Oh, she almost strips for us. Because she like showed everyone her tummy. Oh, Nikki Cross has a cute tummy. She has she has like the normal woman body, which is nice. Because she's not, like, super thin. She's not, I'm going to show off my rib cage thin. But yet she's not, I'm going to show you how far my abs stick out. Because I do abs every day, woman, like Amber Nova. You can, like, see. There's a difference. Amber Nova works out her abs. You can see the de definition in her abs. The only reason you can see Britt Baker's abs, you might not see them anymore, but but the only reason you saw Britt Baker's abs is because there was no fat covering her muscle. Billy Kay, again, she, she has the, the normal woman's body. Peyton Royce is a little bit on the thin side. Alexa Bliss is a little... And you know what? They're perfectly gorgeous women. Peyton Royce, I wish her every happiness. I hope she gets knocked up really soon by Sean Spears. Alexa Bliss is a very attractive woman. Not my thing, though. I, and you can say, oh, well, well, you can say, well, well, he's saying they're not attractive. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they're not my type. Billy Kay's my type. She, 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 has a little, she has a little tummy there going. Peyton Royce is a little on the skinny side for me. Alexa Bliss is just tiny looking. Nikki Cross would have been perfect, but she's married to Killian Dane, though. Oh, well. I'm still a Billy Kai fan. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Oi, oi, oi. Uh, so Nikki Cross makes a comeback, shows her tummy to everyone. Typical splash and bulldog. Billy Kay did, did it, has like some sit out Urnagi. That's how they explain it as. 
Billy K won. I forget in a singles match the last time Billy K actually won a wrestling match. Just because of that, this is a cheeseburger match. Then Rey Mysterio is at home uh, with his son Dominic. Dominic says, an eye for an eye, Seth. We're going to see Seth versus Dominic really soon. That should be interesting. Then we have uh, Gronkowski's at home. Some fat guys with him. Talking about stuff to move, I guess. I don't know. Because I don't remember there being a chubby ref in WWE. And then you can tell there's a gardener and it's like, oh, God. I can see, I can see the hair ornaments already. That's our truth. I know what's going to happen. Ron got rolled up for the 24-7 W9 South 11 Championship, whatever they call it now. You know what was going to happen once football season kind of started up? Because there's no way. I don't care who's the coach of Tampa Bay, but there's no way in frozen heck that he's going to let Gronk be on WWE. With the amount of injuries that seems to occur recently by only a few people. Well, I'll get into that later. It's like, no, we're paying Gronk millions upon millions of dollars. You're, you're not being a pro rider. I don't care what you're um, So Gronk got rolled up. He lost his 24-7 title. Good. Predictable, though. So this, eh, it's a can of soup. And we have Nia Jax taking on Kyrie Sane. And this is where I'm upset at WWE. I think it was last week, because this was actually this was actually a tape show. Spoiler alert. This was actually a tape show from last week. It was all on every wrestling channel that Kyrie Sane got busted wide open. And you can see the after effects on certain certain things. There's literally like a gash in her head. I'll say it's a good inch, inch and a half, inch, inch and a half gash. The story behind that is, um, so so, so we'll, I'll get into the match, I'll get into the story behind it. So Nia Jax versus Kyrie Sane. Kyrie tried to jump Nia, and, and not happening, she's too big. Uh, and then it slap, Kyrie gave Nia, yeah. That just upset her a little bit. Um, Nia Jax went for a Samoan drop, got... Transition to a sleeper roll by Kyrie Sane. And then, oh, that's Simone a headbutt. And I'm like, Kyrie Sane does a sliding running knee. And then they go outside, I'm like, oh, wow. This is where she gets busted open. They edited the living piss out of it. Because all you see is it was taped. She it wasn't really... You know what? I'll blame Nia for a lot of things. Punching Becky Lynch in the face. That was ugly. Just dropping poor Kyrie Sane on the back of like the, the base of her skull on the turnbuckle. That was Nia Jax's fault. This was not Nia Jax's fault. Like Kyrie Sane literally ran she did a Goldberg. She literally ran her head into the steel steps. Kyrie Sane, those are steel steps. Steel steps win versus human skin. So if you do it wrong, and it, I think she caught the corner, she caught like really like the edge. It sounded great. And I'm like, oh, Kyrie Sane's going to bleed. Yo, woman bleeding. Yes, yes, yeah. At least it's equal footing for everyone. Well, we'll get to that also in a little bit. But I'm like, oh, wow. They're going to show this on TV. I, I kind of got excited about that. But then they edited it out so much, they just... First of all, they did a really good job cleaning her up. I guess they used like a flesh tone a butcher, uh, but buttresses to keep keep the wound closed because you didn't see any stitches. You couldn't tell anything was significantly different, actually. And she came out with a white face paint. I'm like, oh, wow. That red blood. She's going to be wearing the woo Ric Flair Crimson Mask. No, that wasn't the case. They just got... Rolled into the ring, Simone drop, end match, cut away, 
Nia Jax looks like big person. Kyrie Sane just just kind of lays there. <sighs> Only because I knew what the results were, and I was severely disappointed. Smash is a piece of toast. I think that's a couple times I've given out that toast rating. I'm both on Raw? Maybe. So that was that. Uh, that was... You spend like a whole week hearing, hearing about this horrific injury. It's like, oh, really? You don't want people to see women bleeding from the head. I don't know if Charlotte Flair does all the time. That's a whole other issue. Um, then we have Orton and Edge promos. Yeah, they're both saying it's going to be the greatest wrestling match. Probably be the most boring wrestling match. Then we have Charlotte Flair taking on Asuka. Uh, they start off classic collar and elbow tie-up. Uh, Charlotte. Again, she's boasting because she has Asuka in headlock. Again, if you're going to do a wrestle, at least start talking throughout it. Let your opponent know that you're doing something. Uh, she started to list off all the places where she beat Asuka. And then those chops by Charles still sound vicious. She learned that from her daddy. She also learned how to bleed from her daddy, too. Because for some reason, I think this is the second raw in a row where she got a busted open lip. Again, uh, accidents happen. She might have done it herself, too. Which I think in the wrestling business, like, that happens a lot more frequently than you think. Which is weird. Like, you just say, oh, I'm going to make this look great. You bang your head too hard against something metal. Like, oops, I didn't mean to do it that hard. Just ask good old Goldberg there about concussing himself every so often. No one else to blame but him. Uh, so Charlotte Flair got a busted lip, but she bleeds like a daddy, baby. Because that busted lip, oh, my goodness. It looked like she took a blade to that lip because that blood was all over her lip. And dripping down. She was licking it and rubbing it. Yeah. She learned how to bleed from a daddy. I'm so happy. Because I'm the... I would bleed for her daddy too. And her daddy would bleed for me. And we'd bleed all over each other. Because I'm a late, great, dusty, rose impersonating voice. But that's okay. Woo! Um, so yeah, so she, she got a bustled up. Bleeds just like Ric Flair. She's going to have that one match where, where she's going to do that blade job. Man, she's going to wear that crimson mask, just like her daddy did, too. And then it was uh, her turn for some offense. Uh, she tried natural selection, got counter into the arm bar, and then triangle choke. From there, there was another counter. This was actually a pretty good counter wrestling match. She countered that into the Boston Crab. Asaka, uh, Asuka, because it's spelled Asuka, it's... Bad English. Um, Asuka again went to a knee bar, then Charlotte countered that. Someone went to a deadlift German. That's a pretty tough thing to do. And then Asuka got sent out, and this was like the first time in a long time. Like the referee actually began like counting out. One, two, three. There was a fast count, because I swear she wasn't out there for four seconds. Nia Jax came out. And be, before the referee, could, like, before Nia Jax ever touched her, the ref's like, okay, ring the bell. Ten. It's like, one, two, three, four, ten. Yeah, ring the bell. And once the ring bells, or once, yeah, once the bell rings, then Nia Jax just, just like, dropped Asuka. It was like, okay. I'll tell you what. It was okay, except for that ending. These endings kill these matches because it brings you up so high, and you're like, "That's how it ends." It was a ham sandwich. Oops, sorry about that, folks. I got to that magic twenty-seven mark. It's weird. I don't know what it is about that. It does that a bunch of times. But yeah, so we have... Well, this was in a match, though. So Lana just looks like a hookered-up high school girl. Way too much makeup. Like, her, the top of her cheeks actually look black. Everything else looks, like, super bronze, and it's faded. 
but it's so shadowed. It's like, ugh. And her lipstick was like, I don't even think the lipstick was on her lips. It's, well, not the fleshy part of the lips, but like on the top of the lips. It's almost like a lipstick mustache. It was weird. Again, it, she just seems so floozied out. That's the best way to put it. Uh, then our main event, MVP and Drew McIntyre. Bobby Lashley comes out with M uh, he opens he comes out first for MVP. Then MVP comes out, and then Drew McIntyre comes out then. Lana comes out. And wow. Kevin Dunn couldn't get enough sh camera shots of Lana's ass. Wow. Lana's ass was the star of this match. That's because it really started off just a bunch of punching. Um, Drew did get distracted and then he got posted for his efforts. MVP got, got his big boot in, but only got a one count on it. Then Drew McIntyre did the tomahawk chop from the top rope. I see people still use a tomahawk chop. Sure, Chief J. Strong Bros. smiling. So is um, Wahoo McDaniels. Uh, then Dean did a flip over the top rope. That was amazing. Again, a 275 man doing like a runny, flippy thing over the top rope is very impressive. And not killing himself in the process. Uh, back in the ring, it's really just time to step the Claymore. Three, two, one, Claymore. Match over. Bobby Lashley comes in, puts in the full Nelson. Oh, I love old school wrestling moves like this. Uh, this, this match. Yeah. It was okay. You, you knew there was going to be something screwy at the end. Again, it suffers again from the other matches where you kind of know how it's going to end. It was a ham sandwich. And that was WWE, WWE Raw. Um, yeah, WWE Raw. I'll tell you what. It was a ham sandwich of a show. Yeah, the saving grace is the is having the fans there. Although I do want to see Shotsky Blackheart drive her little tank like all around the stadium during the matches, and just be that like annoying little pesky kid who's like not paying attention but doing their own thing. That would actually be funny, and they could actually work her into an angle in NXT if they did it the right way. Again. WWE, you say if you think that's a good idea, mail me one shiny quarter, no more copyright violations, and we're all set. Uh, so that was it. I already gave you guys the schedule for this week. Um, again, be safe, everyone. Don't do anything stupid. I think Daytona Beach never has a curfew. Daytona Beach is a freaking barter town of Florida, I think. Because Jacksonville, I think, has a curfew at 8. Orlando's at 10. Like 10 to 5. Jacksonville's like 8 to 6, which is weird. Like, I can see like 10 to 5 during the week. That makes sense. Because generally nothing good happens between the hours of 1 and 5 unless you're in bed. Like, if you're out on the town between 1 and 5 in the morning, there's, there's a pretty good, like, 80% chance of something bad happening anyway. So, that's it. Um, stay safe, folks. Uh, I think I, the lizards are attacking, though. Other than that, have a good night.